What's going on guys, Flick here and welcome back to another episode of the FIFA 16 West Ham career mode. And we've got some exciting news to start off today's episode. Magellan has reached his 60 overall rating and that's kind of the threshold that I need players to reach before I sign him. So now that he's reached that rating, we're going to offer him a contract to join the senior squad and hopefully he does reach that potential of 80 to 94. But our second player here, Mike Berry, already 60 rated, but he's four foot eight, and we're going to have a lot of short players on that left hand side. And that's something that I think EA needs to fine tune a little bit because that's not really realistic. You're not going to see many four foot eight players getting into the youth academy for a lot of teams. But hey, it is what it is, and we'll sign him up once he reaches 16 as well. Since it is the start of February, we'll also get into a squad report, and Spiegel will also be leaving the team, so we don't really need to track him at all anymore. But Riedwald also growing. I think I'm going to get some more training sessions in for him as the season does get into the later half. And hopefully he can develop a little bit more than he has. Currently only going up plus one when I've expected him to go up a little bit more than that to be completely honest with you. But I do have some high expectations for him. Uh, but our players on loan are doing pretty well. And Lanzini still up plus two. Pied up plus two. Origi up plus two. And Iannaccio just leading the way up plus seven. Some insane growth. But we've been training him a lot. And that might be something that needs to be fixed later on. Because plus seven in one season is a little bit unrealistic. But it is what it is. And to be fair, I think Iannaccio should have had a higher rating in the first place. But that's going to be it for the squad report. So a couple things before we get into our first match against Southampton. Unfortunately, Erkin has suffered a broken tailbone. He's going to be out for the rest of the season. So that is an unfortunate blow because we usually rotate him and Aaron Cresswell around pretty much every game. So Cresswell is going to have to step up. And luckily, we have added a couple of other players at the fullback position. The other thing is I'd be ready for press conferences to return in the next episode if that's something you guys want to see. So make sure you leave a comment down below with a question if that's something you guys want to see return in the next episode. It's now time for our first match of the episode against Southampton, and it's going to be a debut match for Sebastian Young. Hopefully, he does perform pretty well and really implement himself as the starting right back for us. That's what I expect him to be, but it's hard to tell how a player is going to play before you've used him. We'll have a look at the league table and we're slowly climbing back up, back in that fifth place position and not too far behind the four teams that are in front of us. So if we can win a couple of matches here starting today against Southampton, we can really move our way up and contend to get in the top four. Mistake here by Southampton leads to us getting the ball back. Alex Song going to be able to find Origi right here. Can he do a move to get around the defender? Yes, he can. Gets by one. The slide tackle by Jose Fonte is a clean one. We're going to collect it with Song again. He's waiting for the pass. He finds the pass. It's Mark Noble. You know he can do work on the inside, but he gets it stolen from him. Oh, Classy's away right here. We tried to do a slide tackle to stop him, but he managed to get around him. Now Jay Rodriguez going to send it to the cross, and it's classy. What a save by Adrian. No offsides. It had to be a save by Adrian to keep that from going in. And what a save it was. Good work and good reflexes. Corner kick here for Southampton. We got to get to it. Adrian collects it like he always does. We're going to distribute right here. This is good. Origi has space in front of him. Going to look to play this one. It's going to be Sacco on the ball. Gets by one. Keeps it. Going to try to play the through ball, but Davies gets to it. Lanzini now is going to find Origi. That's a foul and maybe a penalty inside the box. That was a bit of a gift from Southampton. They could have defended that a lot easier, but we'll take the penalty kick. And I think we're going to have Mark Noble step up to take this one. Don't know about that penalty call. And we'll let Mark Noble take this one. Try to put it off to the right. We're not going to try to get too much power. That is a well-placed penalty kick. Where's the cameraman? We're going to try to find him. I don't know if he's on this side. Here he is. And we're going to do a new celebration here. Really hyping it up for the away crowd that are watching from home. And a good goal there by Mark Noble. Fools the keeper. Guessed the right way. But just couldn't save it. It's halftime and we do just have the advantage over Southampton. 1-0. It's been a pretty even game thus far. But we were gifted that penalty. But honestly, it's been a good half by Sebastian Young, our debut player. He's performed pretty well defensively. And he's had some good clearances. And some decent counterattacking opportunities. Let's see if he can continue that here in the second half. This is good here by Southampton. They're going to play it inside. It's Victor Vanyama. He's going to go back to the corner flag. Sends it in finally. And we're just going to clear this one out. There we go, Adrian. What a save. Keep this from being a corner kick. Lanzini falls on the ball, but somehow we keep possession there. And we're away. Cresswell's going to be able to find Zarate here. He's going to get around a defender. Going to cut inside. 
plays it off. This is a good pass to Victor Moses. Somehow he keeps it and has a shot. Not a very strong one though. It was a miracle he was able to even make any contact there. Steal by Noble. This is good right here. It's Ian Nacho. He's got the pace to get around the Southampton defense. Gonna really use that pace. Left foot it. And there it is. It's 2-0 for us. That's gonna seal the deal. And Ian Nacho, man, he is either a super sub whenever he comes on. What I'm trying to say, he's an impact player. Whether he's subbed on or whether he starts matches, he gets goals. And they're just a burst of pace. The Southampton defense is tired and he really exploited it there. 2-0. That should be three points. It's a corner kick for us in the dying minutes. Lanzini descended in and he puts it in a really nice position there, but cleared out by the keeper and that should be the final whistle. We get the 2-0 result away from home, so a good performance by the team, really well defensively, and I'm really happy with Young. He played spectacularly in his first match. It's time for a monthly scouting update from Morocco and see if we did get any good skillers back in the first squad report. 53 to 73 potential, 59 to 79, 57 to 79, 62 to 86, 66 to 90. That might be one to watch out for. And a 74 to 94 looks to be a glitched right back or left back. So that is really good news for us. So we're going to sign him up and see what he can be for us. We also have our first scouting report from England for a defensive player. And our first player here is a 77 to 94. We're going to sign him up right away. Dominic Cook looks to be a good talent for us. 67 to 91, also pretty decent. 64 to 86, 60 to 82, and a 58 to 82. Overall, pretty happy with the scout from England. I'm going to simulate this FA Cup game against Arsenal because otherwise the season is just going to drag out too long. Uh, we've already got the EuroLeague and the rest of the Premier League to play, so I'm probably just going to be simulating the rest of the Cup games unless we somehow manage to get in the later stage of the FA Cup. But... Walcott getting an early goal for Arsenal. Zarate managing to tie things up. Giroud now scores for Arsenal. It's 2-1 for them. Let's see if we can get a goal here in the last 30 minutes. Henry is going to score for us. Maybe we can get the winner here late on. Otherwise, it's going to be 2-2 against Arsenal, which means we have to do a replay. Now that we've added Magellan to the first team, we can have a closer look at his status. And as you can see, he does have the exciting prospect status. Does have a value of 275,000. If we take a look at his stats, He's already quite good in the physical, and I'm hoping those do grow over the course of career mode because I know last year that was sometimes a problem. And technical attributes also quite good. We'll take a look at his player information here, and as you guys can see, he has grown now. He's five foot eight, which is a lot better than what it used to be. His ability to play left mid as well as left wing, high medium work rates, four star weak foot, and four star skill moves. Looks to be an awesome player. He's also right footed on the left hand side, which is what I personally prefer. So if we can actually develop this guy, I think he could be a first team player in no time because he's got the perfect stats to do so. So here I am simulating waiting for our EuroLeague match and suddenly a Norwich match pops out of nowhere. So we have to play this one. I decided to put out our cup team because we need our first team ready for our EuroLeague fixture because that's going to be a big one for us. And at this point, it means more to me than this Norwich match. And it's a match that we should be winning, to be honest. Jenkinson does get the first goal for us in the 34th minute. We're moving to the second half now. Can we get the 2-0 lead to really ensure the three points here? But maybe we can just hang on to a 1-0 lead. Sako makes it two. That should seal things up. Redmond gets a goal back, so it's a good thing Sako scored. But we get the three points, which is all we need. It is now time for our EuroLeague fixture against Bordeaux. They're going to be a tough team to come up against. And what I've done is I put Moses in at the left striker position because for some reason, Origi, his fitness was down a little bit. I think they might have played him in one of the two simulated matches that we just did. Um, so I'm going to put Moses in for the first half. And by then, Origi should be ready and fully rested. Saibe is going to play this one to the outside. This should be one that we can get to. Good tackle by Gabbana. Let's go on the counterattack. They have been keeping us in our own half lately. And now this is a good chance. Cresswell. To Pyatt, back to Cresswell, and he's got space in front of him. Have a touch. Have a couple touches. Why not? This is good. This is our chance to send it across. Away from the keeper here. Finally, we get it a little bit away from the keeper. Still able to clear it out, though. It looks like that left-hand side is going to be left open, so that might be something we can try to attack here. Yep, we're going to win that. Cresswell again, right where he needs to be. Now Victor Moses, going to keep the ball. Moses, good work to create this chance. Going to try to cut inside, gets by a couple. Going to look to send this one in. What a header. But I think it might have been a header away by the defender. Just steal it from him. Steal it from him. Go on, Jung. Good work. 
Just play it across. Finish this. Victor Moses. What a save by Carrasso. I can't believe. Oh, he was offsides. All right. All right. Well, this match had some opportunities for both teams. Unfortunately, neither of us were able to break each other down. So it ends at nil nil, which means we have to get a win in our home leg, which is something I hope that we can do. The fans will cheer us on and should lead us to victory and the next round of the EuroLeague. We're going to simulate this Premier League game against Aston Villa. They haven't been doing the best on form, and I think we have better chances simulating this one than playing it because they beat us bad last time we played them. Uh, so hopefully that will change in this match. But we do have one match left in this episode, the second leg of that EuroLeague fixture against Bordeaux. It's going to be the home one, and Sinclair nets a penalty for Aston Villa to give them the lead. Hopefully we can come back and score a goal or two in the last 20 minutes. Riedeval gets a big goal for us. Can we get one more? That would be crucial for us. Are we going to pick up a draw? Yes, the match ends at a draw. One to one. We'll take one point away from it. It's time for another monthly scouting update. This time from the United States. See if we have any good talent here. 59 to 75. A 72 to 92. We're going to give this guy a chance. Alex Morrow might be a good talent for us. 64 to 82. 59 to 81. 55 to 75. I think that was 77 actually. 65 to 89, 72 94. Again, we'll sign him up. Kenny Duval. And it's 61 79, 58 to 80. All right, it is time for the final match of the episode, the big home leg of the EuroLeague fixture. And we've got a strong team to bring out for this one. I'm giving Sako the start over Origi because he's good on form. And he's been pretty clutch in some of our big matches lately. So I'm hoping he can roll this one into this match. This is good build-up play. We just have to play this one over the top. It's Payet. Great job bringing this one down. Just has to finesse it around the keeper. There it is. Such a calm finish by one of our best players, if not the best player on our team. Dimitri Payet gets a crucial goal for us. And now we have the momentum and we can dictate what goes on in this match. Cross sent in. Uh, somehow they keep this. Are you joking me? That is such a horrendous goal to concede. We'll see the replay. The cross ends in. We clear it out. Deflects right back to one of them. And then it goes inside the box and they finish it. That is just our luck. Cross sent in. He's wide open. Where's our defense? I was trying to defend it there. Control the own man. But he kind of went off from there. It's 2-1 to one for Bordeaux. They're starting to run away with it. Victor Moses able to get inside the box here. Going to triple tap this one. Okay, he finished it. I thought we just messed up completely, but Payet being in the right place at the right time again. Let's keep rolling on because we need to get another goal now. There's 15 minutes left, guys, and we need another goal. Bordeaux hasn't really come back and defended necessarily. They haven't gone uh, ultra defensive, so we still have a chance, but not if we keep doing those kind of passes. Let's go, boys. Well, guys, we put up a great fight, but we just couldn't beat Bordeaux. It ends at 2-2. And since they had the away goal advantage, they are going to be advancing and we will not be in the EuroLeague. I wish we had gotten a little bit further, but I hope you guys did enjoy the episode regardless. If you did, do me a favor, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And until the next episode of this FIFA 16 West Ham career mode, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.